Welcome to the Military Times Reporters Roundtable, where each week we bring you the inside stories behind the headlines. I'm Leo Shane, Capitol Hill Bureau Chief for Military Times. With me here again are Megan Myers, our Pentagon Bureau Chief, and Howard Altman, our Managing Editor. Good to see you both back here. Megan, you've been tracking the issue of extremism in the military for a while now. Pentagon leaders have been focused on this since news broke, since uh, that a number of the rioters involved on the January 6th assault in the Capitol had links to the military. Um, but well before that, you were reporting on cases about neo-Nazis and white supremacists slipping through the recruiting background checks and getting into the ranks. Now the folks at DOD are talking about developing some new penalties for service members who are found with, with links to these groups. What, what do we know about that so far? So there's a handful of projects that they're working on all through a special DOD working group. Um, and part of that working group is to sort of consolidate um, and do some surveys and um, do some data pulling of cases from the past, cases that are currently ongoing. Because in, in the past, you know, if something was going on in the Army, the Army was handling it, the Marine Corps was handling it. Now DOD wants more visibility on those things from a broader scale. Um, but they're also working on just coming up with a definition that they can use uh, for extremism, that they can, that commanders can consult, um, you know, when they think a case uh, is in their ranks or when they, they know there's a case and they would like to open an investigation or figure out the right entity to open that investigation. Um, so that work is ongoing. Um, in July, this working group is due to uh, provide a progress report to the defense secretary um, and then give some, some more recommendations on near and longer term projects that they can work on. That, some of that will include a lot of upgrading of background checks um, and some ongoing screening while, uh, while troops are serving to make sure that if someone is becoming radicalized while they're in uniform, uh, that also gets picked up. And I know that's going to be a major point on Capitol Hill. This is connected to the budget request, too. They're going to ask for some money to get this work done. Yeah. So the budget request includes uh, about $30 million to look into, um, up, you know, upgraded manpower and technology for doing some of these background checks. But also, as you noticed, uh, a team to develop some sort of putative uh, regulation that they can they can use to actually charge people with extremism. Right now, they don't. There's many kinds of misconduct uh, that you could charge someone under, but straight up white nationalism, white supremacy, or even affiliation uh, with some of these groups is not illegal right now. And so they are um, you know, really trying to, to home in on what that looks like and what they can do about it. Let's jump to another uh, hot topic on Capitol Hill in recent years, and that's the military draft and including women in it. Uh, this week, the Supreme Court opted not to hear a legal case asking for women to be added to future possible drafts. Um, this has been a change that lawmakers have talked about for years and eyed, but they haven't pulled the trigger on it. Howard, what's what's the impetus behind all of this? Well, the Supreme Court kicked it uh, back to Congress to make a decision. The advocates for having this ruled unconstitutional say they're uh, supporting that for two reasons. One is that with only men who are subject to selective service, they're also subjected to the penalties that exist for not registering for selective service. In addition, the, they talk about that this sends a bad message that women can't serve. The, the last time this came up in the Supreme Court in 1981, Judge William Rehnquist argued that the all-male selective service was not unconstitutional because it would, the Selective Service was a precursor to the draft for combat troops, and women were not allowed to serve in combat. That all changed in 2013 when the Pentagon opened up combat arms to women. So that reason no longer exists. There's been a number of actions in Congress, a number of uh, bills floated. There was a recent commission that found that there was no reason not to change this, and I imagine that Congress will continue to take it up and, and they may pull the trigger sometime. Now the Supreme Court has, has uh, decided they don't want to take this up. Right, look, one more for you two uh, before we get going here. A lot of the media this week has been reporting on uh, an, a DOD report that's due later this month on unidentified aerial phenomena uh, in the United States, better known as, as UFOs to me. Uh, defense officials said in recent days this won't be an alien unmasking uh, or a, a you know investigation into outer space invaders, but instead a look at some unexplained flying objects that may be drones or surveillance aircraft from other uh, from other countries. But my question to you, Howard, is 
when are we going to get the Space Force report that gives up the goods on the aliens living among us? That's why we have the Space well, Force, right? That is why we have the Space Force, to find out the truth is out there, and we want to know the answers to these questions so that people can live long and prosper. <laughs> Megan, which, which floor of the Pentagon are the alien secrets hidden on? Is that the basement level or basement seven, basement eight? How far down is it? Incorrigible. You know, there actually is a room that says like alien experiment room on the outside. That's just a joke, I believe. Um, but actually, I want to correct you, Leo, because you've made a mistake that I think a lot of the American public has made. It's not a DOD report. It's a DNI report. It's a director of national intelligence report. So... What that means is that, you know, we have these videos that some naval aviators took a few years ago of, you know, lights showing up, disappearing. They sent those over to DNI and they were like, I don't know, you look at them. Um, and what we know about what's in the report is there's nothing conclusive that says that this is alien life. And there's also nothing conclusive that says that this is some sort of, you know, top secret Russian or Chinese uh, drone program that they accidentally took, took footage of. So uh, pr whatever ends up being in the report and whatever also whatever gets publicly released, because this is a report that's going to Congress, and then we'll see what, you know, what portion of that uh, lawmakers choose to share. The Pentagon doesn't have any, uh, doesn't have any plans to have a big rollout of what's in the report. So um, it's, people are probably going to be a little let down, but I guess that's just more fodder for conspiracy theories. Megan, why you got to take away our fun? Why can't, why can't, why can't, why can't we have some fun here? Look, thanks Somebody to both Somebody has to be the voice of reason. reason. <laughs> Thanks to both of you. Appreciate you coming on. If we do find aliens or if we get more info on these other big stories, you can read all about it on militarytimes.com. Thanks to all of you for watching. We'll see you again next time.